Okay, greetings Minecrafters and welcome to another exciting discussion on all things well-being, another Minecraft discussion. I am Dr. Kimberly Quinn and I am here sitting with Dr. Leslie Averill uh, at, the, at the beautiful Champlain College campus in Burlington, Vermont. So to begin, is it okay if I call you Leslie? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. And I believe that Leslie is here to discuss with us success equations. Mm -hmm. So first, yeah. Leslie, before we get into that, if you want to just uh, maybe let us know what your role is here. Yeah. And maybe as well as how many years or how long you've been at Champlain. Yeah. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me, Kimberly. This is um, the highlight of my day is to have this conversation with you. So thank you for the invitation. Um, my role at the college right now is executive vice president and chief operating officer. And I have been connected to and employed by Champlain for approximately 19 years and have held a variety of roles um, over that time, starting as an adjunct instructor, moving into vice president of student affairs, vice president of academic affairs, now executive vice president and chief operating officer. Wow, I think I don't even think I knew about the adjunct part. Yeah, that's how I started. Awesome. Yeah. I just learned something about you today. <laughs> okay, Leslie, I am I am really kind of excited to hear about this. So earlier we were talking when you were um, talking about your topic of success equations, you were saying how it has something to do with ensuring that you have an okay or solid day. Can yep. you tell us yeah. about that? Yeah. So um I think it's really important first to understand that I consider myself, and I think each one of us can consider ourselves uh, success architects. Like, how do you build success into your day? So I know I just shared a bunch of titles that I've had or I currently have at Champlain College, but the backbone of my work and my life and making meaning of the day and staying healthy or well really has to do with the title of success architect. And again, it's something that we all, I believe, can be for ourselves. <clears throat> and when I think about a success architect, I think I break it down into variables. And what are the variables that I need to have in place in order to have an opportunity to have a decent day? And I use a decent day or an okay day or a solid day intentionally because especially in this, at this point in time in the world through the global pandemic and um, race relations and poverty and I mean, violence in around the world, having a solid day, I think for a lot of people is even a stretch. So I like to be, I like to think of myself as a realist and a pragmatist. Um, so having an opportunity to have an okay day is good. And the way I go about that is thinking, how am I going to have a good day today? How am I going to have a good day tomorrow? And that starts with the day before. It means I need to hydrate. It's really kind of basic, right? I'm going to list off some variables for me that make it okay, give me the chance to have an okay day tomorrow. Starts today. I gotta hydrate today with water, not with caffeine, not with wine, not with soda, not with a lot of fruit drinks, but water. And it sounds really basic, but some for many people, including myself, getting enough water, H2O, into our bodies each day in our busy, busy lives is really challenging. So I don't take anything for granted in my success variables. H2O, hydrating today. Another thing that I have to do today in order to ensure that I have an opportunity to have an okay day tomorrow is to get a good night's sleep. I need to go to bed at a solid hour, a decent hour, and have four or five hours of solid sleep. <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night, but I have to be able to go back to sleep. I got to wake up. For me, waking up without an alarm clock is essential to if I have a good day. And that is about hydrating and going to bed the night before first. 
if I can wake up with that alarm clock, which is one thing that I'm very successful at, uh, I am then able to eat my fruit and vegetables, like eat food as fuel. Now that doesn't mean I don't eat Snickers bars and ice cream. I do. I'm by all means, not a nutritionist in any way, shape or form, but I know I need to eat my fruit and vegetables and um, have some fuel in my body. I can't just eat Doritos. There's no fuel in those. So I have to eat right. I have to move. I'm a highly energetic person. And if I don't move, I have too much energy. And, you know, it's the flip side of not enough energy. But what's, what is our individual need to relax and to move is important for someone to understand about themselves because I am such a high energy person. I know I need to get outside and move my body. Another part of um, my success variable is being outside. Being outside for me creates perspective and reminds me of my place in the world, especially on hard days or personally hard days to be outside and overwhelmed with the sun or the heat or the rain or the snow or the freezing rain or three feet of snow, whatever the, whatever mother nature gives, I need to go out and have it on my skin. It's an essential success variable for me having an okay day, being outside in mother nature and having her help me understand my place in the world perspective. Um, so what do we, we've talked about water movement, mother nature. Oh, um, learning something new is a variable for me, making sure that my brain gets some kind of stimulation that makes me think creatively or challenges, challenges me. It doesn't have to be, you know, a credit bearing three credit course, but it can be, you know, reading an article and being inspired or having my mind uh, uh, challenged, challenging the way I think. Having somebody say something to me at work that challenges the way I think. Something I go home and I, peru I, cons I keep um, molding and folding around in my mind. Um, so learning something new each day is critical for me. Um, reaching out to a family member or a close friend. And it could just be sending a funny picture in a text message, sending an email, sending a handwritten card, making a phone call, but making connection with somebody. It doesn't have to be for an hour. It doesn't have to be out over dinner. It can be a quick thing, but reaching out to someone that I really care about is really essential in my success variable equation. And the final thing is uh, making sure that I spend some quality time, even if it's just a couple of minutes each day in the moment with my husband. Uh, any relationship takes work, including a especially a marriage. And um, I don't get these variables right every day. But when I get these basic things in place, I have the opportunity for an OK day. Okay, Leslie, I have to tell you that I know we were just talking about it briefly, but I feel like I'm sitting and looking in the mirror <laughs> because so much of what you said about the moving, the outside, the woods, the whole thing, learning something new. So let's let's start with, um, because you had me right in the beginning of that with variables because just in the word is mm -hmm. change. So do yeah. you want to tell us about how that yeah. works? Yeah, so these are my variables um, that... I know if I address each day, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm set up for an okay or a solid day. Having said that, just as the hours go by and our days are evolving, so are the, the variables. These happen to be the backbone of my success equation, but, you know, different things happen and um, there are days when, you know, I won't exercise. There's There are weeks when I won't exercise or um, I won't be reaching out to the, you know, the people in my life that I really need to be or should be. So I love this mantra of progress, not perfection. And I try to hold myself accountable to my success variables, 
but I change minute by minute at a cellular level and my variables change as needed. So I like to give myself the flexibility and permission, you know, like a diet or exercising, you need to give yourself the flexibility and permission to not be perfect. And that takes an incredible amount of energy and commitment to give yourself the flexibility, in, especially in, in our culture and in, in our society here in the U.S. Um, if I did everything I thought I needed to do every day, I would burn out and, you know, I would be sick, not well. So the variables change. I'm not perfect at completing them every day. I just know that to have an okay day, these are the, these are the, these are the steps I could take. These are the things that I have within my control, within my circle of influence. This is how I can make a difference for myself each day. And I do think that that's something that we as humans can get stuck on. Um, what's out, you know, our focus being on things outside of our control. And these are the things in my life that I know I can control. So, you know, to the listeners out there, I ask, you know, what is within your control to set you up for a solid afternoon or night tonight um, versus what's outside of your control? Like if you're, you know, in public transportation and the bus or the train doesn't show up on time, how do you take advantage of that and be in the moment and care for yourself within your circle of influence versus um, letting that late public transportation take you into a really stressful downward spiral? I, I try to be really aware of what's in my circle of influence when I'm considering well-being and setting myself up for an okay day. Okay, I, I can tell you right where I'd like to sort of continue here, Leslie, is uh, is let's say if, if somebody um, is is sort of just beginning to become kind of enlightened with the, the idea of well-being and trying to get mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. and a, to, to get themselves into a better place mentally, mm -hmm. physically, spiritually, the whole thing, with these eight uh, tips or strategies that you offer, how would you suggest, like, be, like be, I think of mindfulness, like beginner's mind. Yeah. How would you suggest they get started? Yeah. I love that word mindful, right? It's like you have a mind full of something or of lots of things. I know that's not that question that you just asked, but I love that word mindful. And I'm guessing that your listeners have a mind full right now of of all kinds of variables. So I challenge them to try and sort through those variables. And you know what? No, I don't challenge them. That's such an awful word. I, and I, if they're listening, if they're listening for a reason and I guess I'm just holding my hand out to them through your podcast. Okay, Leslie, and to be honest, Leslie and I were just having a little chat off the record here because <laughs> we both were just, we were just in it to win it. And we just, I don't know, we just, we were just had a lot of feelings going on. And so, uh, so I think Leslie would like to explain to us kind of backtracking, not about a challenge, but yeah. about a reach out. Yeah, reach right? out. Yeah, I don't like the word challenge, um, especially when you're starting to think about well being because there's so much pressure that comes with that word. And my hope, for myself and specifically for this podcast and any of the listeners would be that they hear our conversation as an outreach or as an invitation, um, our arms wrapping around them, um, 
an opportunity with no pressure to start thinking, well, what are my success variables and how do I get started? And I think how you get started, you know, if you're listening, you've already started. Right. So, you know, give yourself a pat on the back for that. Um, wrap your arms around yourself, give yourself a little hug, high five. And then, and then I would say, well, when was the last time you laughed really hard? Or when was the last time your body felt good? Or when was the last time you had a good night's sleep? Or you felt good because you went out for a walk? Just recall that person that you reached out to that made you laugh. And then do those things again. Do that one thing. If a colleague made you laugh last week or a month ago, reach out to that person. Stop by their office. They don't need to know why you're stopping by, but they made you feel good. And that matters. Repeat what made you feel good. Now, caveat. If you had too many glasses of wine and you felt good, that doesn't matter. That doesn't count. That's the wrong kind of, that's the dis-ease. <laughs> right, 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 right. We're looking for the well-being. Um, I like this. Yeah. No, I like this a lot. And also, of course, cognitively speaking, you're speaking to the, or preaching to the choir, they say? Yeah, preaching to, preach to the choir. Yeah, because the brain loves patterns, right? Yeah. Leslie, so the more somebody's just starting with the well-being thing, mm -hmm. and after, I think it's it's 21 days, a habit shifts mm -hmm. and sticks, right? And like other things, when we practice, that's something, or yeah. follow through, repeat, the more yeah. we, it, it takes less energy. Yeah. We get, um, you know, there's this other um, exercise that, that I, invite myself to practice and it's hard because you have to get out of your own way and there's nothing more challenging than getting out of your own way and that's sorting through the chattering monkeys in your mind oh my god yes right so when we yeah. talked a few moments ago about having a mindful versus mindfulness um being able to sort through what's filling your mind and the chattering monkeys so that you can get to the pieces of your success equation, that in and of itself is an incredibly difficult task. Sometimes quieting those monkeys, quieting the chatter. But maybe maybe your next step, listener, right now is having a warm glass of water. Unless you're in a very hot and humid climate, which I am not right now, maybe you need a nice ice cold water. But I'm going with just, doesn't even have to be tea just warm water. I carry warm water around with me at work a lot because it makes me remember to breathe. I like the heat helps me remember to breathe during the stressful meetings. So it's just a little, it's a little task, a little tool. So to answer your question, you know, how does one get started? There are so many ways to get started, but in a sense, the listener already has because they're listening. Congratulations to you, listener. And maybe you go get yourself a nice cold glass of water or warm tea. Maybe you walk around the building that you're in. Then you feel good about that. Small steps. I'm a big fan of small steps. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it. I say, this is making me think of something I say to my students, Leslie, is, is that I think of like a bank, like a self-esteem bank, because mm. it can be so hard for some of us to to be good to ourselves mm -hmm. when there's maybe from childhood or yeah. actually uncomfortable or better to other people than us. Yeah. So taking a small step like you're talking about with tea or cold or warm water, yeah. like good job, you know, and not being silly about it. Like yeah. that's really difficult for some people mm -hmm. and small steps leads can lead to big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and on another thought, we're doing it right now, especially people who are listening. Just talking about health, talking about well-being, talking about taking deep breaths, having hot water, going for a walk, reaching out to a loved one, the act of talking about it for the two of us, the act of listening to the podcast, that in and of itself helps create that, uh, what, the mind, the channels of our mind and habits of thinking and instantaneously changes our chemistry at a biological level in every cell matters. I love that. Look at you're smiling 
just because I said something that made you feel good. Look at yeah, it's true. Smiling matters. Smiling matters a lot. Right? Even Mirror if neurons. you even if you force the the spot smile sometimes, it matters. So listeners, just smile right now, even if it's a forced smile. There's I can't remember how many hundreds or thousands of muscles that um what is it muscles that have to flex in order for you to smile. Totally. And it tricks the brain into thinking it's happening. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it's, it's, I totally agree. Mirror yeah. neurons right in it's there. It's great. Right, right yeah. in action. I love it. I love this. Wow. I, I think, honestly, I'm going to be thinking about this and writing this conversation through my head the whole way home in my Jeep, Leslie. This was so exciting. This <laughs> conversation about success equations. And you said something cool related to that. You want to oh, tell yeah. us? Oh, yeah. Success equations. Um, if I'm reading your mind correctly, I, I started with this idea that we're all our own success architect. I like to think well, of myself, right? Like name what it is you yourself for fulfilling prophecy, name what it is you want to be. And for me, it's a builder of um, success. And what does that mean to me? And how do I get there? So as a success architect of my own life, I invite you to consider that you already are a success architect of your own life. And what are the variables that are important to you for having an okay day? Because in order to get to your definition of success, you have to get to okay. You have to get to, right? It's a, it's a, it's progression and it takes a lifetime. It's not something that just, we can turn on a dime. It's a practice of, um, allowing yourself to grow into your true self and nobody can tell us what that is but for me it starts with an okay day and pieces of a puzzle i've only named eight of the pieces of a much larger puzzle but when i accomplish those very basic daily tasks I'm set up for an okay day, which then on those days when the sun is shining and people are appreciative and I'm not stressed out and I've done everything I'm supposed to do, I actually could have a really successful, peaceful, meaningful, inspiring day, but it's not without those first eight variables. So good luck to all the listeners out there as they consider their next step and what their variables are. Um, you've got this. I know you've got it. Best of luck. I absolutely loved how how you just wound that up, Leslie. And just what a sort of what a wonderful, you know, positive note to leave our listeners with. Yeah. And so, okay, I guess <laughs> this is this is uh, it. This is this it. Is it. So this is Dr. Kimberly Quinn and, and Dr. Leslie Abram signing off from Champlain College in the beautiful Burlington, Vermont. Have a mindful and successful day. <laughs>